Empower just released its 2025 annual outlook, which is entitled Return to Normal. Joining me to discuss the framework and some of the key takeaways is Empower's chief investment strategist, Marta Norton. Marta, great to see you. Good to see you. This outlook covers a tremendous amount of ground. If you would walk us through how you and your team put this together, give us an idea of the framework here. Sure. So as we were conceiving of the 2025 outlook, we of course wanted to understand what were going to be the key drivers of markets over the course of the year. We also wanted to delve into the areas that were of key concern to individual investors. So of course, to your point, we're looking at the economy, we're looking at the range of outcomes. We're also thinking about the conditions in the equity market and the mm -hmm. fixed income market, the opportunities, the risks there. And then we're delving in to those key areas, those hot topics like AI, geopolitics, politics. All the issues that are making headlines daily, if not weekly, for sure, Marta. I'm curious, what were some of your favorites? Okay, so I think what jumped out to me the most when we were looking at this is this real shift from 2024 to 2025. So, of course, in 2024, drivers of returns included inflation and the movement around that and the labor market, interest rates. As we turn to 2025, we're really expecting normalization. So these macroeconomic variables are still there, but maybe not the driving force of the market. And instead, what's moving the behavior of the market is their underlying idiosyncratic nature and potentially sector drivers. One thing that's particularly interesting, and this has gotten a lot of press, mm -hmm. is the valuation yes. concern. And we're taking a look at that across different sectors, and we really see that anything related to AI, and you can see that in technology, it's particularly expensive. Let's dive into that a little bit deeper because we know high valuations could mean that stocks are priced above their fair value and we could risk a sell off there. But how much does this really matter to individual investors? Well, of course, I mean, to your point, there's always a range of valuations. There's always something expensive in the market. But to the actual individual investor who has, say, index funds or ETFs, many of those are market cap weighted. And so they have their greatest exposure to the market's biggest names. And in fact, it's some of those biggest names that look very pricey. So when you think of the Magnificent Seven and everyone's favorite names, Apple, Nvidia, Microsoft, a lot of those names are taking up a huge chunk called a third of an S&P 500, for example. And that means investors are taking a lot of concentration in those names. They're healthy names, they're strong names, but it does mean they're overexposed to a particular area of the market. And we know AI is a big part of that. And when it comes to AI, you and your team did a fascinating comparison between AI and the personal computer cycle. Walk us through that and some of the key takeaways. Sure. So as we take a look at the corollary there, and of course, that was another period of great innovation, yeah. rapid adoption. Um, what we really find is that we're late 1990s all over mm -hmm. again. And that's very exciting. That was a great period of um, change for the economy. Of course, there was volatility in the near term with the dot-com bubble burst. Right. But as we take a look at the value add from PC and the market broadly over the years since then, we've seen this tremendous gain, this tremendous change and improvement for all companies in the, in the US market. It's so interesting, such a compelling comparison there, Marta. So while over the long term, we could see tremendous value creation, we may have to get through a little bit of volatility to get us there. I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about something that uh, is top of mind to me always, and you as well. I know you and I talk real estate a lot. What were some of the insights that you found about the housing market? Well, yes, it's very true. Both of us interested in real estate, I would say Zillow, one of the most used apps on my phone. It's interesting when we take a look at the housing market. Of course, this is an area that is a source of both delight for our homeowners and frustration for people who are trying to buy into the market. And a part of that is where mortgage rates have been. Obviously, they've shot up over the past few years. And so what we wanted to do is test what was the affordability like as we saw mortgage rates march down. And of course, there's good news here. As mortgage rates march down, we see more Americans able to afford a median priced home in the U.S. The frustration there is that doesn't necessarily mean that home prices are going to fall. And of course, that's good news for homeowners. We don't want to see a sudden collapse, right. but it also means it's harder for Americans to buy in. And that's really related to the supply demand dynamics in the housing market. Yeah, there, it's definitely a mixed bag here on the housing front. Marta, this outlook is fascinating. It covers so much ground. We've only scratched the surface. Can you give us a little preview, a little hint of what else we're going to find in this document? Sure. So we have a lot of analysis around the yield curve. We're, of course, looking at something that's so important, like the labor market. We're considering geopolitics. 
And of course, on a very timely basis, we're also thinking through the policy ramifications of the U.S. election. All right. And you can find a link to Empower's Outlook on all of our social media posts. You can also find it at Empower.com. Just search for the Investment Perspectives tab. That's where you're going to find it. It's very comprehensive, but it's also really easy to navigate through the different sections. So I hope that you enjoy it as much as I have. I hope you find it valuable. Marta, great job by you and your team. And we want to thank all of you for joining us. We'll see you again soon.